Hello everybody, this is your boy B. Griffin, walking down Broadway on October 15th from about 11 in the morning to about 8 o'clock at night. It's a very long walk. Um, we're going to start off in Marble Hill, which is uh, part of the mainland. Looks like it's in the Bronx, but it's really part of Manhattan. And um, we'll start off there. So here's the Broadway Bridge, which connects Manhattan to itself. And um, this is the number one train. They actually moved the original uh, Broadway Bridge down to what is now the 217th Street Bridge. And they replaced this one. Uh, this is the head house, the 225th Street Station. It's very interesting architecture. Here's the Spite and Diable Creek, which separates Manhattan from itself. Um, very interesting. They cut that out. It's artificial. Here's some scenes from below the subway station before we go over the bridge. You know, traffic and people and such. And you can see, see the uh, traffic lights and the graffiti and all the various New York-y things. Plus you have a Target right back there, but hey, whatever. Here's the tracks to Metro North, which took me here. You can see the station off in the background. I transferred um, from uh, the Harlem 125th Street station. It was one minute uh, layover between my train and the Hudson Line train. Here's the station again. One minute between my two trains I had to catch, otherwise it'd be an hour wait on the station before you could catch the next train. So that was fun. Some interesting modern architecture in Inwood, the uppermost neighborhood in the island of Manhattan, but not in the borough of Manhattan. That would be Marble Hill. Here's a used car lot, or maybe a new car lot. I don't know what it is. It's very interesting. Here's the 215th Street station. Um, I'm trying different exposures on the camera, which is why I might look a little different. Um, this is all manual controls. I'm experimenting with the camera, so a lot of times you'll see multiple pictures. There are actually multiple exposures, different exposure levels. Um, all right, that's how you get multiple pictures. You end up with, you know, you take 10 pictures and one or two of them is good. <laughs> um, interesting old architecture over here in Inwood. Old apartment buildings. They used to build them prettier than they do today, of course. And now this church, see that the cross there is actually from I beams from the World Trade Center on 9/11. If you remember, there were some firefighters that, are, that uh, raised the American flag, and there was I beams in the form of a cross. Those are the very I beams, I believe. I'm pretty sure from the World Trade Center. And it's now in this church, which is the Church of the Good Shepherd on Isham Street in Inwood. So uh, here's some scenes from Inwood. They have an old um, phone booth. Here is the Cloisters in Fort Tryon Park. Uh, it's actually a branch of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's way up in Inwood. It was, the Cloisters are actually constructed from actual European monasteries, which were deconstructed and reconstructed in pieces of them, which were put together and reconstructed. Re uh, and here's a bowl with a mask at the fine fair, our grocery store. But they literally reconstructed, you know, parts, old monasteries from Europe. Here's the 191st Street Station. This is actually a tunnel which links Broadway to St. Nicholas Avenue. But because there's such a dramatic elevation change, like there's like 150 feet between the two streets, because it's Washington Heights and there's a lot of heights, uh, you can actually take, there's very few cross streets, so you can actually take the subway station without going fair control and um, take this tunnel and there's several elevators and it takes you from one street to the other. It's like free without fair control. Um, now we're in Washington Heights, I guess. Um, you saw those interesting shots with the uh, pigeons. Now here is the GWB Market, which actually built into the George Washington Bridge. If you go over the bridge, you're going to go over this market. It's integrated into the base of the bridge itself. It's also a market base integrated into the base of the um, of like the Brooklyn Bridge. So it's a thing in New York. Now this is the Lowe's 175th Street Theater. It's a very extremely elaborately designed theater. It's now a church, um, but it's one of those ancient you know movie palace theaters which are extremely intricately designed. Back in the day. Um, and now this is the Audubon Theater at 168 in Broadway where Malcolm X was actually assassinated in 1968. And of course they have 
amazing architecture because they had to bring people into the theater to see the silent films. Uh, I, I thought the sign was interesting. Just the whole composition, the old building and the awning and all that. And then this street kind of curved away and I was trying to figure out the right composition, the right exposure. But it's very curvy streets in this part of town. It's very hilly streets. This goes uptown. Um, and you have, you know, scenes, basically. Different exposures and different settings and doing it. It takes a minute to switch between them, so you get different scenes. And of course, Washington Heights has amazing murals in these parts. Uh, people paint the sides, the sides of apartment buildings and such. Now, this is the fountain to a certain Phoebe Caroline Cothiel Lawrence, who died in 1915, in front of the Church of the Intercession. I have no idea who she is. And then you have more interesting murals. More interesting murals, you have the, the brick and the window and the mural and the graffiti and the old sign, and it's just <clears throat> the corner. And this, of course, is what happens when you leave a bike out in New York too long. You end up with half a bike to come home with. And then, you yeah, know, um, scenes, for, and this is, of course, Washington Heights at this point. We left Inwood a while ago. And then you had uh, the big sirens and the uh, fire truck come around, this whole scene at that time for, I don't know what it was about, but, and these were these steep streets. This, I believe, is actually in Harlem at this point. We're below 155th Street. And this interesting scene with the train and racing the bus. This is 125th Street subway station, which is the only above ground subway station in Manhattan below Inwood. What happens is you have uh, what's called Manhattan Valley, where and also you have the um, Riverside Drive viaduct here. In Manhattan Valley, around 125th Street, Manhattan dips down below the normal level, uh, but the train tracks and the um, Riverside Drive viaduct, they have to remain level. So they're actually on a level. They don't go up. They just remain flat. But Manhattan dips down, creating this very interesting effect. You have this gorgeous ancient truss viaduct um, and this is, I, I was practicing various exposure levels to try to get a certain shadows in a very dark place and try to figure out how to do that. And you have a nice dramatic shot here of uh, the train racing the bus as it comes from underground, even though the train is actually level. And then um, this is St. John the Divine, which is a cathedral which never gets finished. It's been under construction now for almost 150 years. And this is near Columbia University, the Barnard College is to the right. There's this little trestle in the middle of the street. This is um, Riverside Park. Interesting. I would try to practice like shade and how to get something not to be dark, not too light. And this is um, Riverside Park. I was actually trying to find a bathroom in here and the fortune was locked. So I had to go through like six different places to try to find a bathroom. And my bladder was going crazy. Uh, here's my attempt to use the macro feature on the camera to try to get a very close up on a flower which is constantly moving in the wind. And again, more macro. Macro, you have like a super focus, narrow focus, but you can have a very close object like a flower. Um, and then we're now in the Upper West Side, more interesting architecture, of course. Uh, this is an interesting alley. I have multiple exposures, some are darker, some are lighter. This is more interesting because you have the scaffolding on top. It would normally be lighter, but now it's more interesting. Here we had I don't know, Third Street or thereabouts. It was a church in the background, but there's a school in between and lots of school kids I had way through. Not all of them had their masks on. It was kind of interesting, a little scary. But uh, I was trying to go to this little park um, to catch a, like a, to you know, get some water and catch a um, snack. Now this is an interesting thing. If you know what it is, don't tell anybody, but I found one in the park. Let's see where it is. We have some interesting uh, street art here. Um, then we have, um, let's see, I have notes about some of this stuff. So I think we missed something, or am I missing something? I don't think so. This is Strauss Park. Uh, Ida and uh, what's her name? Um, Isidore Strauss, they died on the Titanic. Uh, she could have taken a lifeboat, but she decided to drown with her husband, and therefore they, they actually lived in that area around 110th Street. 
and they erected a monument afterwards. There's actually several Titanic monuments in New York, and that's one of them. And that's a very peaceful and beautiful park. I always like going up there. That is the intersection, by the way, of effectively Broadway with 11th Avenue. Uh, Broadway would intersect various avenues because it goes crosswise. There's some intersection, or there's some convention of seagull, of, um, you know, uh, uh, pigeons. I think it's about the 86th Street subway station. Yeah. So when Broadway meets various um, avenues, it forms various squares. So you have Times Square, Broadway, and 7th Avenue, and um, and uh, Columbus Circle is Broadway 8th, and Herald Square is Broadway 6th, and so on. So this is broad. That was, we just saw off the stress. The other interesting thing is like burned into the pavement. There's always interesting things like this in Manhattan or New York. It's always, I have no idea what it is. It just, it's in the pavement somehow. It got like melted in there or something. Um, but, you know, Strauss Park is the intersection of 11th and Park. So this is St. Paul's and St. Andrew's United Methodist. United Methodist Church at 86th Street. I can't speak too quickly. And we have a lot of landmarks from this point on. Um, amazing architecture up here, obviously. They have amazing cornice and amazing decorations. They don't put this kind of thing on buildings anymore, of course. Now this guy was amazing. He had all these animals, which were all you know peacefully interacting with each other. You had like a cat with birds, and it wouldn't go after the birds. And everybody was like, it was amazing. You just I don't know, just another street scene. This is the first Baptist church in Manhattan at 79th Street. But that guy, guy was amazing. I had to like rush past him, and I didn't give him money like I should have. Um, but it was one of those just things you see in New York. <laughs> another amazing cornice, of course. Um, you know, uh, Broadway is really, really, really good for amazing architecture. Here's the um, Hotel Belclaire. This is one of the hotels, I believe, that was being used as a homeless shelter a while back, and then people complained and whatever, whatever. And, you know, that was actually one of them. Um, another interesting cornice. And um, <clears throat> I believe that was one of them. And here is the uh, Ansonia Hotel, which would be a lot better looking if it didn't have some scaffolding in the way, but I guess they're renovating. This is like one of those amazing bits of architecture in New York, and it's being obscured by scaffolding. Um, and that is the Belclair is 77th Street, and Sonia is 74th Street. Here's the, uh, is that it? I'm, I'm running ahead of course my script here, but um, here's my, this is an intentional effect of um, really focusing in on the uh, bird rather than the landscape. You have like a really short um, focal length or a very short, um, you know, uh, aperture, which produces a very short um, focus range depth of focus or whatever it's called on the camera. Now here's the Dor Dorleton Apartments at 71st Street, another amazing bit of architecture. Um, this is an interesting square I found. I'm not sure what it was. It looks like there's apartments and there's office towers and people hanging out. It's a very interesting place. Um, now we're getting into towards Lincoln Center. This is a uh, Mormon temple. You can see by um, the Angel Gabriel uh, statue on top. Uh, and then I thought that was interesting, counterposed between that and the uh, satellite dish. So here's Sesame Street Way at um, uh, Lincoln Center. And more interesting buildings, I don't know what they're called, of course. They don't have names these days. These are more modern ones. This was another interesting plaza or square or something built into a building. People are hanging out with their dogs and beautiful uh, light with the tree coming through the trees and everything. This is the Time Warner Center, uh, dual towers at um, Columbus Circle, two towers to Columbus Circle. Um, and now we're going to Columbus Circle area. And then we have um, more interesting sculpture in this area. And then this is 
a good portrait between the, the sphere and the couple beneath and the towers and the lamppost. And there's a bigger one of this in the Flushing Metal Park, of course. And then we're going around uh, Columbus Circle without actually going to Columbus Circle itself. This is it's around the periphery. And here's some um, steam coming out of the uh, manhole cover. It's very New York. Looking down the street. And I kind of had to step into the street to make that picture. And people didn't like me, uh, motorists. So here's Nordstrom's at 5 Columbus Circle. And here's the Hearst Tower. Now the bottom part they built originally, which was like the printing press building for the Hearst um, newspaper, newspaper empire. And then more recently, somebody bought the property and built the tower on top. Or modern tower. So they got this weird thing going on. There's this beautiful building. I have no idea what it's called. I can't seem to find it anywhere. Now, if you're interested in finding old buildings like this or trying to locate or identify stuff in New York, I do recommend the American Architects, American Institute of Architects Guide to New York. This is interesting. They're like renovating this one part of the building. So it's open and it's under construction, but you have the rest of the building, which is still intact or something with the street scene. Those. And here's some more steam coming out of the street. It's from nowhere because it's New York. It's actually municipal steam provided by Con Ed. You can buy that um, for heating or whatever use you have. Um, now we're going into Times Square. We have the Wicked um, you know, show, but not that there's no Broadway shows right now, but they have the advertisement for it, so whatever. Uh, and then we're going to Times Square, of course. Now this is the bust of Alan Lefcourt, the son of Abraham Lefcourt on the Brill Building. Uh, the son died when he was young and the, um, the father put his bust high up on the building which the father was building for himself and um, uh, as a memorial to his son. So that's interesting. That's on the Brill Building which is 49th Street and Broadway. Um, the Hearst Tower is 57th Street. There's H&M Tower. Now here's the uh, Paramount Building, which is considered an eyesore when it was first built because of the clock tower and the sphere on top, but later became a landmark. Here is the um, actual New York Times Building, which is actually the third building ever. They subsequently built two more, but that, that's what actually Times Square is named for, is the New York Times, or Times Tower, or whatever it's called. But that's like the second or third, and there's two more have been built over on 8th Avenue, and they built another one on 8th Avenue, and it's this whole thing. So, yeah. Um, more Times Square scenes. You have a psychic, of course. You have a deli, um, all right next to each other. And here's the, um, the uh, Crossroads of the World, Broadway and 42nd Street on Times Square. Some interesting public art. This was an interesting like art deco design I found. Just gold, okay. Especially if gold now are begins to light up well. And if it's and of course in New York you should always look up whenever you because there's always something up above you. It's gonna be interesting like this. Just look up. This is like a super zoom we're calling it way up because it's super narrow. You can't see very much. Super narrow streets. And you have an old um, advertisement for Lombardy dresses from God knows how long that ago was ago. And here's the Empire State Building popping up. And then we're going to have, uh, oh, these are the Herald Square um, owls. They're a whole bunch of owls. Here's just two in particular. And the eyes used to light up at night green. They're actually illuminated green, but I've been here a night before and they don't do that anymore. Here's the Empire State Building between Harold Towers and Wilson, right, and the Wilson Building, right here. Harold Towers, Empire State Building, and Wilson Building, all lined up. A street scene, very New York. Here is the Gimbals, um, now Macy's, now defunct. 
uh, sky bridge, which you could actually walk across that, across the fifth floor, I believe, if you went to Gimbal's back in the day. Now you can't get there because between two buildings are not associated with each other anymore, so, and Macy's unfortunately now is closed, so who knows what will happen. And of course a lot of the um, uh, statues are have masks these days, the, the thing in New York, the mask up here. Now this is the um, Baudelaire building at 28th Street. It was the, it ha it's notable for having like a Greek temple on top, which is actually the penthouse for the original owner when he built it. Now it's, who knows what it is. This, I don't know what this building is, but it's very pretty. Um, Amazing architecture I had back in the day. I guess it's Beaux Arts. I'm not quite sure what that's called. And now we approach uh, Madison Square Park and the Flatiron Building, which currently is still has some scaffolding on it. They're repairing it. And here is the uh, Metropolitan Life Insurance Building Tower. Um, and the New York Life Insurance Building, which actually has you know 24 karat gold on top of the laid up at night. I think there's like 700 pounds of gold on top of the New York Life Insurance building or something. It's crazy like that. Uh, it's worth a million dollars or something. Um, and more scenes of the Flatiron along with the, where's that? Somewhere Piano Building on 22nd Street. That's the Somewhere Piano. And it has a gold, um, uh, you know, dome on it as well. And here is the Incomplete Tower, which is the uh, Metropolitan Life Insurance Tower. And they were going to build a 100-story skyscraper beside it, but then the Great Depression happened, and they only built 33 stories. And now it's, okay, here's the Empire State Building. And more amazing architecture. I don't know what this is. Just so detailed, and every level is different, and it's, they just built things that way. And this is another, I'm not sure what that building is, but it lit up at night. It had, like, the gold on top. And then this is, right, this is the original Lord and Taylor. Actually, it's the third Lord and Taylor. There was one down on Catherine Street in the Lower East Side. Then they built it along Grand Street, and they built this location, and they built one on Fifth Avenue. Uh, here's Tammany Hall. This is what ran the city of New York for a while, unofficially. The dome, of course, is modern. Here's the Doom Clock, I call it. Originally the Deck Clock, National Deck Clock, but now it is the Climate Clock. We only have seven years for our Doom, so live life to the fullest. Interesting architecture, or, you know, street art mural way up on that uh, water tower on top of the building. It was very dark at this point. Uh, Strand Bookstore, I had to like really crank up the exposure on the camera. There it is. Uh, this is Grace Church on, uh, what, I guess it's West. 10th Street at this point, and uh, people put up posters everywhere in New York. It's always interesting to see the boogie monster with uh, Lady Liberty. And now this interesting, on Waverly Street, we had the uh, contrail to a airplane that was going over as the sun was setting, producing an interesting effect. It's actually an airplane going over New York with McDonald's. So I diverted off Broadway to go into Washington Square Park and it was really dark at this point, so I'm really cranking up the exposure and really turning down the shutter speed and really trying to hold the camera extremely still. And this is why you go to Washington Square Park at night for the, uh, the arch and the fountain. And there's a big party going on, you know, people dancing and music and everything else. And this is the Judson Memorial Church, just south of the park. And I'm, now I'm going, leaving the park and trying to head back onto Broadway again. And here's a street scene from Branch Village. You have the awning and the American flag and trees, and you see the World Trade Center between it. Um, now, of course, it's basically pitch black at this point. It's total darkness at night. I had to really crank up that exposure. Um, and here is the uh, Woolworth building. Uh, and there's the welcome sign to Chinatown. You're getting closer to Woolworth building. 
Lit up for night, of course. A lot of traffic. And I did like 10 pictures of a photographic study on a uh, fire hydrant here, and this is the best one. And this is the original Metropolitan Life Insurance Building before they moved up to uh, Madison Square. Really, really beautiful, you know, arched area. This is the Thurgood, Thurgood Marshall Federal Courthouse Building with a golden um, roof. And here's a uh, municipal building, which has a big golden statue on top. Again, it's very dark out, and I have to really crank up the exposure to make this kind of picture. Otherwise, it's pitch black. It basically looks like this all the time. <laughs> um, this is the statue on top of City Hall, which is next to the municipal building. It's a lot shorter. They actually have an antenna for an old TV antenna for some reason. Here is um, St. Paul's Church next to WCTC. This was almost destroyed on 9-11. Here's the Germania building, which is one of the rare few remaining short old buildings in lower Manhattan. 1865, it's 150 years old. This is, op this is the Trinity Towers, which is opposite the, um, the uh, Equitable Building. It's a very interesting building. It's right next to Trinity Church. They own like, the property and they rent out. Um, here's the bowl at night. It actually does pretty nicely at night because it's well lit. Okay, people want to join. Here is my attempt to have super tight, um, super exposure, super long, um, uh, you know, zoom on the Statue of Liberty from Battery Park. Uh, you really have to crank up the zoom and really have to crank up the exposure and take six pictures to have one good one because it's shaking because you have one tenth of a second shutter speed handheld, which is very blurry. Um, and here again is the uh, the um, Metropolitan Life Insurance Bill building tower. The building was never completed beside it. It was supposed to be 100 stories tall, but the Great Depression happened and they couldn't complete it. So they only built 33 stories. And then here's the New York Life Insurance Tower lit up at night. And this is the um, Metropolitan Life Insurance Building Sky uh, Bridge, linking the two parts of, and this is um, one Vanderbilt, one of the newest skyscrapers on 42nd Street. Here's one Vanderbilt in front of um, uh, Grand Central Terminal. And here's the Chrysler Building at night. You can see the gargoyles in the lower part. And again, the Chrysler Building looks really, really nice at night. Okay. But again, really crank up the exposure. It's a ridiculous degree. Uh, and then Chrysler going in front of Cipriani's, 42nd Street, which is another really beautiful building, and it's supposed to be absolutely gorgeous inside. It's a very expensive restaurant here. Um, and you can see some of the detail, the facade, which is just amazing tile work. Just glazed tile and hole. And here's Grand Central, lit up at night. Again, crank up the exposure really tightly. And the... the, the uh, Vehicles are blurring, of course, because I have to reduce the shutter speed really low. And that's one, not sure where that is. And now we're going to get the um, real life uh, map to show where I went. So you have a general idea of my route here. And every time you see it squiggle, that's because I'm getting to each side of the street in order to get pictures of each side of the street. And here I'm trying to find the bathroom. <laughs> And going down, and yeah, I'm just going back either side of the street, back and forth, back and forth, and then uh, Washington Square Park, and off to Battery, and then whoosh, there goes the subway. That's just, just the subway to get dinner. Whoosh, the subway again, and we're out of here. Okay, night, folks. See you later.